Okay. So um, we just did the action. I know I wanted to work longer, so I think about work for hours. Sitting here. Was it, did anybody have time? Some really good writers always come to this uh, show, but some really good extra writers. <laughs> I mean, you can't get extra credit, you guys. <laughs> so uh, it's now, uh, if you have questions about your work or your creative process, and now's the time. Ask away. They say that you should write what you know and all that kind of thing, but what if I wanted to write, say, from the point of view of, like, an elderly Hispanic woman? Like, obviously I'm not any of those things, but, like, right. you know, if I really wanted to, because I feel like there are so many stories about a young white man in, you know, New York, you know, how, what advice would you give for kind of, like, writing outside your own skin? Right. Well, good question, Adam. Uh, the first thing I would say is that, um, uh, in my, well, this is, this is obviously my opinion. I would like never suggest that one writes, quote, outside one's own skin, unquote, because, to paraphrase, there are so many stories already about my particular group, right? So, because that's, that's um, that answers the question, how much skin do you have in the game? And if the only skin you got in the game is the skin of, yo, I want to write something that might be more interesting to people looking at work because there are so many stories written about my particular group, then that's like no skin. And if you don't got no skin, I would say like... Okay. I just meant, because like I'd more like to kind of promote like diversity in literature. Uh, well, I, I would, I, well, it, it's all, it's the reason why, I'm really, this is a real answer. I'm saying like, you have to, get to know the reason why you want to write that. For example, I've written things about people who aren't myself. Top of it up, two men, who are brothers. Okay, great. Um, but it wasn't because I sat around going, hmm, I'd like to write something about that. Of course not. It comes up from the ground, from that deep place, and it sort of forces itself through you. And then you know your writing was real, what I call skin in the game. Okay? And that you always, no matter what you write, even if you write about someone from your group, oh, she's a black woman who's fought up with a kid, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Still, you have to say, how much skin do I have in the game? Okay, so you always have to ask that question. But especially when you're writing someone who you, you think isn't like you. Right? Especially, especially, especially. Because what you all know, and whether you watch the Oscars or not, we live in a time where, where people's shit is being appropriated big time and they're not being invited to the party once it starts to go to the bank. That's a nice way of saying it. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying, right? People should be appropriated big time. And when the stuff goes to the bank, they're not being invited to the party. And so I feel like it's up to those of us who are still able to think and feel to go, hmm, what's my part in that? Not will I not do it or whatever, but what is my portion of that bullshit, basically? Because we're all in the bullshit. We live in this country. We're part of the bullshit, okay? So what is my part in the bullshit, and how do I do something about that lest I just continue it without thinking? So you want to write someone who's not like you, and you think, what is it? What story is it that you want to tell? that you can't tell from where you are right now. You know what I mean? And then you, if you, if you, if you have to, every time you ask those questions, it has to be a yes. And if you get more no's than yeses, you're better off writing someone closer to home. Writing someone who's not close to home is a really specific skill, okay? So I would suggest, and this is different from writing what you know, I would suggest write someone closer to home and dare to write something that might look like what a lot of other people are writing. Don't just jump out of the, your, the boat of yourself because, okay? Go ahead and write someone from someone, from someone, something like you. It's okay. 
Yeah? I mean, how many plays, novels, movies, screenplays, TV shows, poems, songs have you written? I, I, I don't get the number uh, count. But a hundred? No. One a day for a whole year? I'd like to say so, but no. No. Okay. For seven? Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven? Okay. So this would be number eight? Yeah. yeah. Of the entirety? I mean, like, there are short stories that have been started and stopped. Oh, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. It's like a, you know, if you've ever gone to the bathroom and the shit starts coming out of your butt. <laughs> it's got a droppage in the toilet to count. Right? I mean, I'm sorry. But no, I know. And you guys have heard, see, you know, you know, yeah, the plot is like a cold, you know, plot is like a cold and you just got to keep moving along. I know, it's, it's, it's true. But you know what I mean? Just got to land to, to be real. Okay. Um, or a baby being born. <laughs> There's, that's a better one, I guess. Um, Okay, so so go ahead and, and go ahead and like write a be uh, yeah, I'm gonna write something about me. Okay? And when you grow out of that, you don't grow out of it, maybe if you're that inclined that way, and then you'll say, wait a minute, I'm writing stuff about a an eighty five year old man from Saskatchewan. You're not from Saskatchewan. But damn, oh my goodness. And it's set in eighteen sixteen. Oh my goodness. And then you're you sort of earned it in a way and not gone to it just because you think it might be marketable. Which isn't what you're saying, I know. But that is the business we are involved in. That's what people do. And that's a heavy question. All right, Adam. I'm glad that you're back. I'm glad to be back. It was back. good to meet you, Leslie. Anybody else? Yes. Hi. What's your name? I didn't even know your name. Okay, you're right. I should have. Well, I thought you <laughs> No, it's just, I was nervous. My name is Jessica. Jessica? Jessica? Yeah. Okay, Jessica, cool. Okay. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be on camera. <laughs> uh -oh, you have a, you have a, you know, you're, you're it's cool. Like, ah, I can work on my no, it's cool. Okay. I'm committed to looking a mess today. So. You look good. I'm going to say cool. You look actually. No, you look no I don't, but it's cool. <laughs> I'm committed to it. So anyway, um, my question was, I kind of forgot it now, but uh -oh. it was like, how do you, you mentioned it and I wanted to parlay how do you like find a balance between trying to create something that is marketable and is going, is going to be profitable? And I know that's it, a lot goes into trying to determine that, and then also staying true to like what you want to create. Like as a writer, writing is art, right? So it's essentially you're creating something, and in writing there are a lot of different rules and you know things that you have to adhere to for anybody to take it at you know face value, but still like you know as a freelance writer or you know aspiring freelance writer how do you you know still stay true to that but you have to eat too mm -hmm. or should i just like commit to like having like a a side career or job or work in retail while i try to you know bump my way around in the dark until i come up with some gold or something like right, right. if that I makes sense I, I hear you i hear you um it's it's really hard to guess what's going to be marketable, okay? It's really, 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 really hard. Um, so I would suggest just staying true to yourself. Now, this is what happens. You just, what could happen, what happens for a lot of people, you stay true to yourself, and then you have kind of a couple of different tracks that your career starts to run on. You run on the stuff you stay true to yourself track, where you're writing your thing just for you, okay? And then you get maybe a work for hire. Someone hires you because based on the quality of work that you've exhibited in your stay true to yourself stuff, they say, wow, Jessica's a good writer. We're gonna hire her to do whatever, work on a TV show or have a commission or write this article or whatever. They start hiring you to do things. So based on your excellence in your stay true to yourself, you get hired to do work for hire, and that's a way to make a living. You can also be recognized with prizes and awards, and that can give you an opportunity to do other things. So I would say if, you, if you're trying to kind of like, I mean, stumbling around the dark, right, in the mine, trying to find gold is a lot better than shooting in the dark, trying to hit a target. Oh, baby, it's over here. I mean, that's even worse. That's so bad. So I would say, stay true to yourself, do your thing, get better and better and better at it, and people will begin to notice you 
and you'll get hired to do things that are more profitable. Okay, or you'll be invited into those meetings where you'll say, pitch us some ideas, Jessica. What do you want to write? We'll commission you. Or we'll hire you to write a TV show or create a TV show or something like that. Okay, does that? This sounds good. It's just, you know, I guess it's my own insecurity as well. And that's just personal, but, you know, well, I'm, everyone deals with it. So it's just, you know, something you have to get through. But sometimes I feel like I want, I want to kind of step out the box. And I remember having a debate with a professor past professor about it because you know she had her ideas but at the same time she was like I don't really want to critique you like that because I feel like this is it should be you know totally creative but it's just it's, it's, it's so confusing sometimes to uh, decide whether or not I really just want to present like what I feel is my true work and my true like my voice within the different writings poems plays you know uh, screenplay ideas and things like that or you know that versus doing research and figuring out you know what's going to appeal to producers or an audience or a certain demographic or you know you know trying to find yeah, all yeah. that I, I would get, and, and we draw and it's as if you, we've got these splits in our mind and I was talking with uh, some of my students because I teach at so on Monday so I had some students this morning and the, we, the distinction was being made between uh, uh, being a writer who writes good characters and being a writer who writes good plot and how, oh, you know, that, it's either one or the other, right? It's either financially rewarding or it's creative. See, you, we got these separations in our mind. We're taught these things. There's actually, it's not either one or the other. You can start to remind yourself that what is creative can also be financially rewarding. Why not? <laughs> well, you could, I mean, the thing is, you, what your job is is to say, to remind yourself that what is creative is also financially, also can be financially rewarding. That's your job. If someone on the corner wants to talk some bullshit to you, let them do their job, but that's not your job. Your job is not to talk bullshit to yourself. Your job is to tell yourself that what your creative work can also be financially rewarding. If you tell yourself that, then things will start to line up that way. Sounds, you don't understand what I'm saying. So you start to say, my creative work can be financially rewarding. Now, your teacher giving you notes, your professor might have been giving you notes to make it better, to make it sharper, to make the dialogue crisper, to make the characters more effective, to make the scenes really pop. That's good writing. It's not trying to make it financially rewarding. It's trying to make it good. You see? So when you get notes like that, like, you have to make this scene really work, Jessica. You've got to really rewrite this to make it so I can understand what the character's going through. It's not, oh man, she just wants me to turn me into one of those you know, work for hire people. No, she wants to make a better writer. And so we have to take those notes in that context. You see? When they start saying, oh, cut, cut, cut all the black people out of your work because no one black people don't get nominated for awards, so let's not write them. I mean, really, if you, you want to do the, the, the al algorithm or whatever algorithm, whatever it's called, al algorithm, the algorithm that's going to tell you, don't write any black characters, because black characters aren't going to give you those nominations. So what, you're going to quit? I mean, I don't know if you write black characters or not. I do. I'm not going to stop. So what? Fuck y'all. I'm doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? We can't just stop because the marketplace is not going to invite us in. That's the, that's the line of the sand right there. They want, to back, they want us to back down, shut up, go home, and quit. Or they want us to turn us into those people who are going to write in only the way that they are going to allow us to represent ourselves. Really? That's what's going on. And that's on a big level. That's on the Hollywood Oscar level, you know what I'm saying? So we're not talking about that necessarily. We're talking about you at your desk having to make the decision, I'm going to write from my heart, I'm going to write from my guts, and I'm going to be the best writer of Jessica's stuff that, I, that anybody has ever seen. I'm going to be amazing. And the money comes or not comes, it doesn't matter. I, at the end of the day, I can look at it and say, I did a great job. Okay? That's a 
some real good and really good questions today. Yeah, Siobhan, you got a question. I do. Um, what is your decision process? How do you decide when to cut a scene, cut a whole scene? Whole? <laughs> I love that you ask me these questions. I can I remember your work a lot. So cut a whole scene. Yeah, just, cut whole just like, ugh. Yeah, what's your, like, if that's your impulse, what is the decision making process you go through whether to do that or not? Well, um, Sometimes we get notes from people who read our work and go, like five people in a room and everybody hates the scene. That, sometimes that would be because we cut it, maybe, okay? Sometimes every time we read the scene, we go, nah, this is just bullshit. This isn't working. This is so not working. I really like it because this is a scene where she gets to wear the pink dress. I want her in a pink dress. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's time to cut the scene. Mm. Okay? Ask yourself, is it helping the story? Is it telling the story? Is it, is it like we said earlier today, is it generating the next scene? Right. Whether it's a novel or a play or a TV show or whatever. Is it <laughs> pushing the story along? Is it telling us something about the character, what I call vertical plot? It's not just this way, but sometimes plot is developed vertically. Right? Yeah. Is it telling us something that we really need to know that will pay off somehow in the relationships that we will see later? Vertical plot. That's what I call it. I don't know, like I told you, I didn't go to school, so I just make shit up. So. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So is it one of those scenes? Like, oh, we will never understand her if we don't see her in that pink dress. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, then you might say, well, we need to see her in the pink dress. Let me find another way to show her in the pink dress. Oh, look, she can wear the pink dress in scene number 45. Ah, great. You see, so you find that the most important thing about the scene, and you might be able to transplant it into another scene yeah. instead of having the whole scene. Okay? But I tell you, every time you... So does that help? I won't go... Yeah. Okay. Ta-da! See? I'm so glad to see you guys. Yeah! Anybody else? a good way to start. So Melania says if, if uh, there's a subject that you're really excited about, but there's so much yeah. swirling information, how do you get started, right? So it's funny, um, I think it could be the same thing for every project. You start by putting the time in, right? Do you have a writing time, period, during the day? Okay. Do you have a time, a work time, a creative time during the day? You do. And it's, a, it's a every like five days a week or whatever. Six days a week. And so you go to a certain place, tell us about it. What's it like? Okay. Okay. Okay, so it's at the beginning of your day. It's a block of time in the morning, okay? And it's vocal work, some movement. Meditation. Okay, and prayer. So you're, and that's your creative time. Okay. Okay, great. So I would like you to, in that block of creative time, get specific, carve out a specific piece of that time. You not in that respect, or is this something you already do? No, we just do the right. So carve out a because you've already made the time. So get a specific piece of time in your creative period, in your creative time during the day, to sit down at your wherever, right, with a notebook or whatever, and write longhand your dancer so you you move your kinesthetic learner. 
I'm guessing. So moving is good. So you can even stand and write if you want. And you can do 20 minutes a day, uh, every creative period. 20 minutes, it's a magic number, I think. I don't know, I have to do research on it, but 20 minutes. Use a timer, not your phone. Everyone knows your phone is cracked. Your phone is cracked, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, okay, because your phone has all these wonderful things on it that want to entrance you, okay? So you're gonna use a timer for 20 minutes, each writing, each your creative period, where you're gonna be with your notebook writing on this topic. Okay, so we're gonna focus it in and move, I don't know, your right hand or left hand, right? 20 minutes, six days a week. See what happens, that's where you start. You start by making the time. And if you already have the time period, you start by getting more specific with your time. Okay? No, 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 I'm just blah, blah, I'm just going blah, 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 blah. I wanna write about a unicorn. You know, whatever, right? Whatever it is. 20 minutes on the topic. Right. Okay. And if you want to pick a designated notebook, so you, so it's not a notebook with everything else in it, because it seems like you put a lot of things together at once. Yeah? Get a designated notebook. Pick a color that you like. Doesn't have to be expensive. Okay? Hey, Jesse Alex. Hi. Hiya. Okay. That's good? Helpful?
No, I'm saying change it, but don't change it by Xing out all the pages and starting all over. Change it, but change it on little post-its. Like, this is what I know has to happen in the first 30 pages. This, and then this, and then this, and then this. So change as much as you want, but don't. New document. This one's better now. I'm going to start the beginning again. No, 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 no. You see what I'm saying? It's different. So change everything you need to change. Just make little notes to yourself. I'll post it. Not on yellow legal pad, not on the in a notebook writing longhand. I'll post it. These little things that are cute and they can stick all over. Right? And go forward. And then when you're done, on page 60, you write with all those new things in mind. And when you're done, then you get to go back to the beginning. And that's called second draft. And the sword of discernment and the song. The sword of discernment. So, well, maybe, or maybe you're just going to write it all and see if it holds together with all this new information. Yeah, because it'll probably by that time be something. Right. Something else. To right. Do. But you will have at least gotten a draft. Yeah. The desire to turn back to the beginning and make it all perfect is, you know, it's. it's yeah. Illusion. Yeah, wow, you, your voice like carry all the, an illusion. That's right. It is an illusion. It, it's it's just a uh, yeah yeah. Well, the specifics actually don't matter, which is why we're, I'm not asking Stacy about the specifics. They actually don't matter. What matter? I mean, they are your importance, good question. But what really matters is her mind and the way she is thinking about what she needs to do to make it right. You see, and, that, and that's why it's an illusion. Because to fix, she really probably does need to fix it. Sure, we're not discounting that. But the desire to go back and rewrite the first thirty pages, because what happens is then you, you're in the loop. And I, I, I most folks will go back and they'll rewrite them again. And then they'll have another great idea and they'll rewrite them again. And at the end of this year, they'll have 30 interesting pages and about 127 drafts. Ryan, I'm looking at you. I'm not going to mention any names. You know, I'm just looking at Ryan right now because he's wearing such a cool leather jacket. Ryan, 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 you know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, today, by the way, it's leap day. Yes. Oh, it's so exciting. Day. I'm gonna like do something extra. Right? Like, jump up and down. Yeah. Yeah. It's just this. Yeah, it's just that? It's just that. <laughs> uh, okay. But does that does that help? Try yes. that. Because what happens is if that doesn't work and all yeah, but really, if you get to the end then you'll have so much more of an understanding. I think I just feel so like especially after like just stopping and doing the exercise so there were so many moving parts and there were some things that I just couldn't say maybe in this in this particular play of the series that could maybe live in another play and so determining the things that needed to be cut out made me think well it's all entrenched in the earlier shit and instead of just keep going just keep going because I feel very what unsure Nemo. what did they say? Just, just keep swimming keep just keep swimming that's right just, just keep just keep swimming, just keep writing, just keep writing, get to the end, and then fix it. It's just as a spiritual practice, yes. just as a spiritual practice, just do that. There's something magical you get to the email. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. You were a few years ago. You looked vaguely familiar. Yeah, I don't come that often. What's your name? I'm David. Hi, David. Yeah, how's it going? It's going great. Sleep <laughs> day. <laughs> and I think I, I asked him along the lines of like, oh, this hasn't happened for me lately. And you used one of your tattoos to tell me basically not to freak out about it. And I was hoping you would maybe remember which tattoo and what it says. Oh, that's such a great question, David. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Has it happened for you yet, whatever you're waiting for? Yeah, you know, it, 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 it made me feel less like shit that day. So, <laughs> you know. Well, you know what's wonderful about my tattoos? is that they each say the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So I only have to remember one. Okay. And I can and I can just say it three times. 
So the tricky thing is, is that one's written in small type, then middle size type, then bigger type. My idea was to get it XL, large, but I was like, nah, overkill. Three is a good number. Good enough for the Trinity, it's good enough for me. So, um, so it says, it's from the Yoga Sutras. It's sutra number one, two, three. So it's all this joke, right? You can do the joke, right? Okay. Sutra number one, two, three. If any of you are old enough or to have a, you know, remember that song, ABC, easy as one, two, three, simple as over and ABC, one, two, three, do re mi, baby, you and me, girl. Anyway, but, so the sutra says, Ishvara Prana Divani Va, which is horribly pronounced Sanskrit. It means either go with the flow or submit your will to the will of God. So, you, so we say, what time it is? Because I don't have a watch. Unlike Chris Barlow who's a Mac genius and has one of his watches. Anyway, I say, what time it is? It's time to go with the flow, right? Just go with the flow, right? Flow me capital F, the big picture. I can't see the whole big picture. I'm just gonna figure that right here is where I'm supposed to be, because right here is where I am. Yeah? Got it? I can repeat it in two years' time. I don't have to be the same thing, man. But I, but I enjoy talking about it, so thanks for asking. Are we, is, that, is it that time? What time it is? Do we have three minutes? Yes. Three minutes. Anybody have a question? Anybody have an answer? Anybody have a story to tell? No? No story? Okay. Oh, yes. able to get started in working on this play that I've had running on my in my mind for a long time and right. had an insight also similar to yours that I think uh, I need a different enough a character that is not there right needs to be there right and so yeah, I couldn't write the play today because I wasn't sure what to do right. so I just wrote a series of questions to okay. myself about it and who is this character that's trying to find the way in okay and that's stuff. Right. I don't know if that helps or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I had that same que that, that same question when you, you going know. back and go. No, I, I'm. I, it's not going back. I know I'm going to keep that mm -hmm. part, but it's going to. It's turning in a direction that's totally different than where I thought it was going. Yeah, most things do. <laughs> most things. <laughs> don't they? Most things do. Most things do. Hey, you Chris Farrell. You good? I got a short question. Go ahead, we have a short question. Oh, they're going to cut us off. Oh, well. We can still talk to Chris. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we have to tell them. Yes, we have to tell you when we're going to be here. Uh, not next week, because I have to go to LA and be in rehearsals for probably some of the wars. But, which is going to be at the Senate Theater Group. Um, but the week after next, which is March the 14th. Thanks, Annika. So, March 14th, we will be back here. Thank you all for coming today. Thanks for your questions. We're going to continue because Chris Wallow has a question. Bye. Okay, Chris Wallow. So you talk about outlining kind of yeah. and and it reminds me of a piece of advice you gave me last year about taking the story, like in rewriting the right. right. and taking the story and outlining it on index cards and just kind of flipping through those cards, flipping right. through those cards, flipping right. through those cards. And so I took a play I wrote about a year ago and I did that. Right. And I didn't like I didn't like how the first draft had ended up, but I really liked flipping through those index cards as I like tried to fix what I wanted to fix. Right. And I have never been able to go back to actually making it not on index cards again. Like, the more I try to outline it, the more I'm like, I love outlining it, and I don't ever want to ruin that outline by putting it back on the paper. Huh. Are you uh, dating right now? No. <laughs> that, it, it has everything to do with you, the idea, your idea of how great it is going to be and the reality of it, you got to just, you know what I mean? You got to get either get yourself, I'll tell you what, you get yourself a really big index card. I was so big, it's going to be like 150 pages. You know what I mean? And you, you can, 
So it's like they, I mean, the idea and the, wow, it's so beautiful. I don't want to ruin it. You're such a good writer. I know you're writing. I know you. I know you. You're so good. Oh, stop. No, but I'm no, I'm serious. I mean, that's horrible. That's your personal business. But um, but the idea that you finally got it right. Now you got to go out of the house and see how it plays in the street. I'm serious. I'm, that's why I said it's like baby. It's silly to think that, but you think, oh wow, this is going to be my perfect life, and you have to actually step out of the house and see what it's going to be like. You have to put it on the page. You have a lot of experience with writing, so you know what that's like to do with other projects. This is one of those things like, I finally got my shit correct. I, I don't want to ruin it. Guess what? See how it holds up. Which is not one of the ones you worked on last year. Not with you. Okay. I like this. Yeah, well, it's going to be great and great play because you write great things. So. Just give over to how beautiful it's going to be. Okay. Thank you for coming. It's so good to see you. Anybody else have anything? Or we're going to go. We're going to chat. These people are like, no, no, let me go home. Yeah. Yeah, Jessica. Writer's block? Writer's block? Writer's block? So just write, use prompts, participate in another artistic form, like music or dance or whatever, you get in a movie. All those things are great, all those are good ideas. I would just say, I think what I've discovered is that the muse, and we never think this about the muse, but she likes a schedule. You never think that, right? The muse likes a schedule. She loves it when you show up at your appointed hour to converse with her. So if you make it your mission to have a daily practice or an almost daily practice to show up at a certain spot and say, you know, like you're going to call a friend, hey girl, how you doing? She, she will more often than not be there for you. And just to sit there and put the time in, putting the time in, I mean, just right is kind of fuzzy for me, putting the time in, put the time in, it's not your phone because your phone is cracked. Okay? Just put the time in. And start saying nicer things to yourself. Saying that like you made a commitment like not to look good today or whatever. I'm sorry.
I, I mean, I think we'll always have reasons to talk ourselves out of what we want to do. But that's your reason to talk yourself out of writing in here. It's just respectful to writers. No, man, writers, we don't, you know, we don't sweat it. You can write your own stuff. I mean, no one's going to write the exact stuff that Amy wants to write. Although, train wreck, if anybody saw it, I don't know what happened in the last 20 minutes of the movie. Someone fell down on the job. That's all I want to say. She needed a writer. Come on. Or the, whatever. But but I think that, um, you know, it's not disrespectful if you do it well. You know what I mean? If you're just writing so you can have parts. I think Amy didn't, wasn't, isn't just trying to get parts. She's also wanting to get certain kinds of things said and, you know. You know, she's not, she's not trying to get old. Um, if you want to write about things that are specific to wherever it is you're coming from, you have a right to write those things. You don't need a license. You know? You can start calling yourself a writer if you want. You can't. Well, you were like, I'm just giving you permission. I'm giving you permission. You can call yourself a writer. I'm going to call myself an actor. I'm an actor. I'm in play. Look, I'm in play. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's okay. You can call yourself a writer. I write, I, I'm an actor and I'm a writer. I write things too sometimes. You can say you can frame it any way you want. You're allowed to, to do what you got to do. You know? You're totally allowed to do what you got to do. No problem. You just got to work as hard as these people over here. Hard. You know, you, I mean, you have to treat it with seriousness, like they would if they started acting. They would treat it as an incredible craft that they really want to be good at. You know, I know these people. So they work really, really hard. So you have to work at least as hard as they would at your craft, at your chosen craft. Yeah, and you will.